Okay. Okay, then I would like to welcome our guests who are joining via Zoom, who are joining via YouTube to our today's FemRite event, a cooperation event between FemRite and Goethe Centrum Kampala. We are back uh, online. Maybe you remember the FemRite readings we had last year where also everything was shifted online. So we find ourselves in a similar situation right now. Um, we wanted to have this event actually on our rooftop terrace because also the last month we slightly went back to having physical events, but as it is right now, we cannot. Um, that doesn't mean that um, our cultural program has to go down or we, uh, we cannot meet online. And that's why we decided to shift uh, this event yeah, yeah. online. And we are happy to for everyone who's uh, joining today's, today's conversation. conversation. Um, the author is going to be uh, Mulumba Ivan Mathias. Welcome. And the moderator, <laughs> welcome. And our moderator is Zinonula Iga Samuel. Maybe some of you remember he was also one of our speaker guests last year. And today he will be joining us as moderator. My name is Zina Weber. I am the cultural coordinator of Goethe Centrum Kampala. And together with the cultural team, Ani, and our director, Barbara Sommer, we are happy to welcome you. And that's it from our side. Um, have a beautiful evening. And I give my word to Bridget from FemRight. Your mic is muted. I've, I've unmuted it. Bridget, Bridget, you need to unmute yourself. I've unmuted now. Now we hear you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you can hear me now. Yes, you can. Yes. Okay, okay. My name is Bridget Nakuya. I'm a member of FemRite for about three years. And um, um, I met Sam, Iga, Sam Zinunla Iga in, for the first time in a poetry anthology by FemRite, Go Tell Home, which is, I think, from 20, 2019, with a poem, Sometimes I Feel Stupid. It is a multilingual poetry anthology. So it was also translated in Luganda because some Igazinula is a Muganda. And I've also heard that our author today, Mr. Mulumba Ivan Mathias, hails from Masaka and he writes some Luganda poems. So I'm excited to be part of a team that is going to have two Luganda poets. Though my, my role today as a member of FEMA, it was to introduce our moderator, Mr. Samuel Iga Zinunula. Uh, I would like to say he's a published poet. I was talking to Madame Hilda earlier, and she told me he has, she has read 
some of his short stories, but most of the stuff I've read, I have three books here. One, Go to Home. Then The Butterfly Dance. He also has a poem in here. It's a poetry anthology. So he has been, I think this is from 2010, and Painted Voices from 2008. It's a um, children's poetry anthology. He has a poem in there called My Brother Abu, which is great. So he's a very multi-talented writer. And I, th I think it's going to be a great session with him moderating us. Yeah, I hope we, we enjoy ourselves with our author and our moderator, Mr. Sam Iga Zinunula. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you, Bridget. Um, allow me to mention that as far as I know, Bridget is also from Greater Masaka and uh, she too speaks Luganda and uh, writes in English. I actually didn't know that Ivan Mulumba Mathias is from Masaka. I thought he was from Luero here. But um, <laughs> nice to have you all. The people in Germany and internationally might not know exactly what we are talking about. But um, Buganda is the biggest kingdom in Uganda. It is the kingdom that gave Uganda the name of the nation after the British uh, gave us back our independence. And so Buganda being the central kingdom around which Uganda was forged, uh, Buganda lost the B and we got together with other kingdoms and chiefdoms and we became Uganda. Now, um, Mulumba is from Buganda, Bridget is from Buganda, but we are from everywhere. Hilda is from Kabale, what is called the Switzerland of Uganda because of the mountains and beautiful scenery. But um, that is beside the point, I mean, a beautiful besides. The beauty is that tonight we have Mr. Matthias Mulumba. And the only thing I don't know about Mr. Matthias Mulumba is his status, as in whether he's single or double or encumbered or free. Uh, otherwise, Mr. Matthias Mulumba is a Ugandan author. He's a land economist and he's a surveyor. I think he's a quantity surveyor. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's a valuation, certified valuation member. Surveyor. Valuation, valuation surveyor. Yes. Valuation yes. surveyor, yes. yes. He's yeah. a valuation yeah. surveyor, which he will visit my property anywhere and say, oh, your property is about worth this much. I think that um, he's been at this for quite a number of years. And um, he is a poet. He's also a writer of novels and short stories. And I must say, it's because of Mulumba that I ended up in trouble. Uh, he is the he is one of the editors of we of Wikipedia in Uganda, and he got me into Wikipedia. So when you Google up, you may not know that. I, I do A, B, C, D, but you will see that Mr. Samulumba has written that um, I am a poet. And so uh, maybe one of these days we should get together and revise some of the data that is given. But he's multi-talented. Bridget talks about multi-talent. Uh, Mr. Samulumba is multi-talented. And on a personal basis, I think he's got two qualities among the top 10 that I personally preach. He's got confidence and he's got humility. And um, with that, I would like to welcome you, Ivan, to our, um, our author. I, I do not want to start giving thanks because if I attempt to, I might not do uh, due service to everybody, but I know that we've got to give thanks to Gote and to Femrite and to all you members who are here. But as I say, I'm not the most competent person to name names. Let me just stick to introducing Ivan. And so Ivan, you're welcome here. I've hinted the people that we have to give thanks to, but there are many others. We thank members who are here. It's true that I've been hosted on this forum before, but today is about you, Ivan. And so ladies and gentlemen, I wish us to put our hands together, even um, like this, to say you're welcome, Ivan. How are you? 
I'm good. I'm good, Giga. How are you? How is the current situation well. fitting? Yes. Oh, How is the current okay. situation? Yes. Uh, I such, hear you. In such times, uh, authors usually start uh, writing more than they used to. I hope you as a writer, now you're writing more than you used to. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. But today is about you. I wonder, have mm -hmm. you produced anything about the current situation? Ladies and gentlemen, when Ivan talks about the current situation, he's referring to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Some people call it the Wuhan virus. Mm -hmm. Others are now talking about such and such a strain and such and such a strain. But let's not lose track. It's COVID-19 that Ivan is talking about. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, Ivan, have you written anything in particular for this period about this period? Uh, I've written some poems, uh, though it's, it, uh, I have a habit of first putting them aside for some time. I write and I keep them away, so I wouldn't share anything, like, because I write in diaries and I put away. But I've re written something. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to have all this time when you don't uh, put down anything. Yes. Okay, I've, I've, great. Mm. At least you've written, you're putting away. I hope you date what you write. Yes, I do. I do. I, I kind of put like, I wrote this on this day, on this day. Yes, it helps me to also remember the, the moment when I put, okay, I put something down. Yes. All right. Welcome, Ivan. Uh, I'm glad you're writing. Uh, I don't know if I'm writing as much as you, but what do you want to start with today? Would like to listen to you read some of your poetry, read uh, whatever you'd like to read to us. What would you want to start with? Um, uh, I don't know, a poem would do. Uh, I don't know whether a poem would uh, give us a piece or to be a poem part of a poem short story. Short and nice. A poem. Okay. Let me let me start with a poem. Please. Uh, I'm going to start with something from uh, Rumblings of a Tree. This one. Uh, this was published in 2017. Uh, so I'm going to uh, start with a poem. Uh, it's titled Children of the Wind. Children of, of the Wind, this is from this book. Uh, Please go straight ahead. Children of the Wind. Their faces know no smiles. The children standing outside the car window, arms spread for coins. There's a plea in their eyes relaying the agony that is their life. War that snatched those that bore them, brought them here as litter on Kampala streets. Humanity begs that I reach into my heap of coins, but I look away like everyone else. I wait for traffic lights to change, lest my kindness brings a flood of them to the already Unpleasant streets. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Ivan, thank you. Children of the wind, their faces, no smiles. Can you tell us about this poem? Why? What? Um, uh, the, what inspired uh, the poem is the You've seen uh, children uh, on the streets, uh, young children, some holding toddlers, uh, begging when the car stops, and, and some of them are victims of war. So they come to Kampala for uh, find uh, Peter. So that is what inspired to write this piece. And most times, uh, people are not generous as, as, as you'd expect. Uh, one child comes and puts up the farm, another one does the same. So that uh, kind of inspired uh, me to write this, this, this piece, uh, showing the, the conflict 
someone knows that the situation, the dire situation, but is scared that what if I give one and more come? So uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's what I, I, I try to capture in this piece. I see. And, yes. uh, and indeed, I think the city authorities have said that they want to enact a law that forbids people uh, to give uh, anything to the children on the streets. Um, maybe that links into the fear that it, it might bring more to the street. Mm. Well, it's not, uh, it may not be the fear. There are sometimes people don't know who is genuinely suffering and who is being used to, to beg so that at the end of the day they give uh, the money back to whoever is sponsoring them. So, but uh, all, all the same, it's a situation that uh, concerns all of us. Okay. So why, why the wind? Why are they children of the wind? Uh, why, 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 why I call uh, children of the wind? Uh, many of them, in my view, lost, lost uh, parents, all uh, lost guardians. Uh, so they are orphans, uh, if I may say. So they don't have someone to provide for them. So all they have, they are on the street. They have themselves. And uh, since uh, uh, in, in, in Uganda, when someone passes on, they say, that is in Buya So uh, that, 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 that whole point comes in that the, the, the children of the wind, since the, the parents passed on. So they don't have anyone. Right okay. Yes. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, 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 thank you. I think in that particular bit, what you see, see the beauty. And at the same time, the kind of dilemma of bilingualism or multilingualism. The beauty is that you take an expression from your mother tongue and you take it into English and whoever doesn't know your mother language may not fully appreciate what you say. But that is the dilemma. The beauty is that you can speak from different aspects and indeed you bring in metaphor that may not be uh, known in the language in which you're presenting yourself. Thank you very much. Um, Mbuyaga is Tambula. Orphans, uh, waves, people who seem to be having nobody caring for them. It's like and also in Uganda, it is said that when we die, we actually become part of the winds. So in a way, you bring it out clearly. If they are orphans, they are children of the winds. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, yeah. Let me ask you to read us your next piece. Um, okay. The next piece is going to come from... Uh, Poetry in Motion, revised edition, mm -hmm. although it's also in the mm -hmm. uh, Poetry in Motion, the, the initial uh, publication. So uh, the piece is titled The Vendor. Those with a copy of this book, it's on page 50. The Vendor. Beads of sweat on his forehead, layers of dust on his legs. He carries on looking for a penny hither and thither to buy food for his heir. In the night, as he sleeps, he dreams of wealth, stretches his hand to reach his fortunes, but the cries of his child detach him. He beats his wife, he beats his child. The two things always impeding him from reaching his dream. Oh dear, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, at this point, let me ask Madame Hilda to please filter through uh, the messages that are coming in so that we can be able to pick out any points, questions that need to be brought to Ivan's attention. And so at, at a particular moment, I'll ask Madame Hilda to read us what she's picked out of uh, 
of the charts. But um, Ivan, yes. the vendor, the vendor, yes. I say, oh dear, you say he beats his wife, he beats his child, the two things always impeding him from e reaching his dream. Yes. Isn't that such great irony? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, what the, did the, you have in, what, what are you telling us? Uh, the, uh, what, 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 what I'm, I'm bringing here, uh, the picture of the weight of responsibility that uh, uh, people toil to provide for their loved ones. And when they are frustrated out there as they toil, they, they turn the frustration on, 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 on their loved ones uh, uh, to a point that someone can say, if, if not, if I didn't have this, maybe a life would be easier. But then the people they are beating are the ones who create the life they are living. Yes, so, so the, the, what, what I'm bringing in this poem showing the weight of responsibility, the frustration. When, when, uh, when people are frustrated, they, and also to bring about uh, domestic violence uh, in, in, in families. The person goes out and toils. If things don't work out, the anger they put on the what? Uh, on, on the children, because they know on, on, on the spouses, because they know they have to provide. So when, when, when I say, always impeding him from reaching his dream. Maybe the dream is to become rich and wealthy, and yet he has to provide. Yes. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, indeed, I, I, I say, I think it is such irony because why become rich if, if not only to be able to provide for those that are closest to you? Uh, mm. But I hear you indeed that mm. I don't know if you've come across this, but someone has written somewhere that a wife is that person who inspires you to great dreams and then stops mm. you from reaching them. Have you come across that? What do you think? <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, the, 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 the second section of this uh, the sentence stops you from reaching them. I think it's uh, the, uh, the, the better boy you can... Maybe in some circumstances, sometimes uh, it's not the case, but in some circumstances, maybe. Yes. But let me ask you this also. Uh, mm. Isn't there a bit of stereotype here? Nowadays, girls mm. also go out and get their dreams. And um, sometimes you find that it's actually the girl that provides. So in this case, uh, what, how would it be? Would the wife get home and beat her husband and, and the child? Well, uh, the persona in the poem I read is a, a vendor and uh, when you look at the current situation, well, when I wrote this piece more than a decade ago, uh, I was looking at the current situation. A vendor is in the city, the CKCCA is taking their wares. Uh, maybe they are being uh, beaten, they run uh, from the authorities. So all the frustrations. Wow. And usually what happens, people, turn the frustration on their on, on, on their on the what on their spouses so yes it's true uh, women also look after 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 the, the, the family but here we are just trying to look at uh, a, a, a husband who is out there working and maybe the colleagues the, the husband works with are not married or don't have children. And maybe for them it's easier or something. Okay. Okay, Ivan. At this point, I, I think I'm going to ask so you a couple of, it, I'm going to ask you a couple it, it, of it, it, personal it, it, questions. On, yes. 
uh, are you married? No. Ah. Not yet, yes. uh, anybody here who would want to know um, anything more about uh, Ivan's status, at least you know he's not married. I won't ask him if he intends to get married and what gender he intends to get married to. But another, another personal question. Yes, um, yes. Ivan, yes. you write, uh, you're writing about uh, children of the wind. You're writing about the vendor uh, whose frustration results in him beating the most important two things in his life. What, what, what inspires you to write? What causes you to write? What brings you to verse? Uh, uh, I'm inspired by most of the experiences. I, 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 uh, sometimes I write on impulse. You see something or hear something and it takes uh, your thoughts in a totally different direction. That's why sometimes uh, the poems might come out in a story form or uh, biographical form, but uh, the day-to-day -day happenings. There are some incidents when uh, I... Uh, Maybe I can experience something. Maybe let's say because of could be the political environment. It could be any anything. It could be something I see on the street. I can give an example now. Like the two, the two uh, poems I I read. I started with. I wrote them uh, then. I, I I was still a student when I walk a lot, a lot in town. And, and also take ta taxis and everything. So sometimes the things you see, the things you, you, you listen to, the, the things happening around uh, inspire me to write. Yes, most, most of the time. Okay, Ivan, yes. Um, yes. thank you. Uh, the things you see, the things you experience perhaps, and... Um, mm. I think our own Professor Wangusa mm. has advised that um, we should seek, if we are to be successful writers, and especially if we are to be successful poets, we should mm. seek to perspire even more than we are inspired. So don't wait, he says, for the... Um, Hilda, what does he call it? Don't wait for the for the muse. Perspire, perspire, perspire. From what you're telling me, you observe and sometimes you write spontaneously. My question is, in in a balance, um, how much do you write from spontaneity and just inspiration, and how much do you contrive and work at at writing and developing a story or developing a poem? And for that matter, what advice would you give? Um, in comparison with what Dr. Wangusa gives? Uh, I sometimes, yes, there are, there, there are pieces that, that I write. Uh, for example, I just sit down and write. Maybe I get a theme and I say, let me write, write about this. It could be a birthday. Ivan, is it your connection or is it mine? I'm, I'm, I, you, you. There is an event. And a bit broken uh, in I, your, in your. It, am I, am I clear your, right now? Your, uh, connectivity. Am I clear right now? Yeah, you're clear right now. Yes, uh, yeah. I, I was saying there are times when I write on Go impulse. On. Then there are times when I uh, structure my writing. I, 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 I tell myself that now I'm going to write. The difference is that uh, I write uh, on impulse all uh, out of inspiration more when it comes to poetry. When it comes to other types of writing, uh, novels, short stories, articles in the newspaper, there I'll get a theme and I'll tell myself I'm going to write uh, about this. Now, such, such, such writing uh, involves uh, research, you structure, like these are the points I want to talk about. If it's a short story, yes. Uh, some short stories come on impulse, but then you build them 
uh, so it depends also on this on what I'm writing. Poetry, most of the times, I don't force myself to write poems. I uh, because they just come naturally. Uh, there is a way you see a poem that was forced and one that was natural. You uh, you can easily relate to something that was inspired than something that was crafted. Yes, and 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 also, uh, of course, a person has to do both because there are times when you could have pieces that came to you naturally, but then in the when you come to read through them, you realize that no, these ones maybe need work. Then you just sit down and, and you put, uh, get a pen and paper and you write something, yes. Samuel, you are muted. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Um, thank you very much uh, for pointing that out. Uh, Ivan, I was saying thank you for what you've told us. And I'm going to ask Madam Hilda to prepare to give us one or two piece, uh, one or two questions or reactions from the chat. But I would like you to give us one more poem before Madam Hilda comes in to point out to us one or two, at least two, two things that uh, we should uh, take notice of in the chat. Uh, Ivan, one more poem, please. Which one will it be? Okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to read uh, Stranger at My Window. It's a poem. Stranger um, at your window? Rumblings of a tree. Uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's from Rumblings of the Tree, this one. Strangers at my window. Raindrops knock at my window, seeking refuge. I ponder in silence. Whether to let them in, hug them, dress them in warm clothes. I wonder where they were when the sun stirred me, but they keep knocking, begging to be saved. From death below. Oh. Uh huh. Yes. Raindrops. Raindrops. Raindrops knock at your window, mm. seeking refuge. You mm. ponder in silence whether to let them in, hug them, dress them in warm clothes. You wonder where they were when the sun starred you, but they keep knocking begging to be saved from death below? Yeah. Why death below? What are you saying? Well, uh, when uh, drops of rain fall from the sky and they crash on the ground, they, 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 no, they are no longer drops. They join... They the, die. The, yes. So they join the running water. So that's the death below. Yes. So the whole point... Uh -huh. uh, 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 when when you are in a house, uh, it's raining and and, and and you hear that tap tap on the on the on the on the window. Yes, and then after that, the the drops fall down and they crush and they they, they become the running water. So that's the death below. They are no longer raindrops. It's now uh, running water, and it's no longer as clean or as pure as it was. Yes. Mm. And you would want to hug them so that what? Uh, well, uh, the point of, of, of uh, is not actually the rain, but it's after actually the, 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 the people who come to you in terms of need. And then Yes, you want to help, but then you're like, hmm, there's a time I had issues. Where were they? So that's the whole message here. But uh, because, yes, I wonder where they were when the sun started me. Like, there are times when it's too hot, 
day in, day out, week after week, but you need the rain, it doesn't come. So if we are talking about friends or colleagues or associates, uh, you might be down. Things are hard, but they are nowhere. Then they get problems and they come. So you are like, where were they when I went through this? So the, the, the image of the rain, the sun, and you seeking refugees, try to capture that. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Um, I see that a couple of other people are, are shaking, are nodding their heads in agreement with you. In a way, this is quite a poignant piece of work. Uh, what it is saying is more meanings than one. Thank you. Uh, I hear you. To think that we might think in terms of raindrops actually dying when they hit the ground is very good imagery. Thank you. I, I like it personally. And um, I think that indeed you're right. Uh, when we all drop to the ground, are turning into another four drops. So I like to read out a couple of uh, reactions, but because I know that Kakwenza join, uh, joined us, Kakwenza, are you still there? Uh, I, I, I wish I would see his hand. But for those of you who don't know, Kakwenza got into trouble. Do you know trouble? Uh, Kakwenza Rukirabasaija got into trouble, got hammered by the powers that be, at least their agents, got imprisoned. Eventually there was an international outcry for him to be released. I think he's been to court. He's a lawyer himself, but as you know, not every doctor can heal himself. And we feel for you, Kakwenza, and you are here today because you're a writer and writing got into trouble. I'm saying all these things, being so verbose, to excuse myself for reading out this, Ivan. And after I've read it out, tell me if you might not fear that you might find yourself in the same shoes as Kakwenza. It is called 1986 Poetry in Motion. I'm, I'm abrogating your reading powers to myself. I'm going to read 1986. Ladies and gentlemen, 1986, the first victory of guerrillas saw the old, smi the old smile, the unborn star with joy, the suppressed sigh with relief. But now I see potholes, landmarks on parched roads. I see outlines of what were hospitals, government schools and factories. I hear drum beats from tummies of diseased offspring. I see immense bellies of egocentric ministers and uncouth war heroes. Where are the trade unions, the new government schools? Where is the coffee, the medicine in hospitals? Where is the spirit of 1986? Ivan, don't you fear? No. Uh, uh, is the... the, the... The funny thing with this poem, I wrote this poem in 2005. Uh, at the time I was in, two, in senior five. But even up to now, it still applies. So you can't fear something that everyone can see. In 2005 and now, those are like what? For, if almost 16 years ago, but it still applies. So uh, as a writer, uh, there, there are people who have talked of censoring yourself. When you censor yourself, like I, I said earlier that sometimes I'm inspired to write because of events or things I see. Now, when you censor yourself for something that is flowing, you, 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 you become irrelevant. You just write things that don't have meaning. So, uh, as long as something uh, has meaning, and, and uh, if you've noticed, sometimes the critical writing is what helps us to, 
to think or point out issues you have in society. If, if, if someone is always, uh, there is they usually a talk, uh, but a, a certain perspective that if people are always praising you, then you know that they are lying to you. At least no one is perfect. So such, there is another poem I didn't share. Uh, maybe I can, it's a short one. Uh, from Rumblings of the Trees, it's, uh, it's five lines. This one I wrote in 2016 in the, that election where there was a lot of military deployment. It's called Stuck. Stuck. Uh, it's, it's in Rumblings of the Tree. Two dogs hold outside my room, stuck after shameless intercourse before the children. We hold two, stuck with the president who won't leave. <laughs> so 2016, something now. So sometimes if you censor yourself and you don't write uh, what you see or what inspire, you are inspired to write, then at some point you, you, you stop being relevant. Because I've read two pieces, one I wrote uh, almost uh, five more than five years ago. The other one, which you read, I wrote the situation hasn't changed. Yes. Okay. So, uh, being scared, uh, hmm. there, 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 some people attack others, attack artists or writers because they don't read enough themselves or because they are insecure yes okay okay thank you ivan thank you very much people say guerrillas uh take to guns uh poets take to pens i, mm. I see what you've chosen um mm. heart uh, the bullets will zing out uh, but stick with the pen. In the end, the pen will win. So mm -hmm. as I go over to Hilda to, to ask one or two, uh, to point out one or two things, uh, let me just point out, Ivan, that Esther asks, um, do you have any works that are not depressing? And Joy Ocho says, Ivan is a great thinker. But sir, even as Joy thinks you're a great thinker, Esther uh, Nanchinga asks, do you have any works that are not depressing? Please respond to those two, and then I'll ask Madame Hilda to point out two. Yes, I, I, have, I have work that is not depressing. Uh, I've lined up a number of pieces for today's event. I, I hope by the end of the event, uh, what? You are shaking your head. Time is never enough. Go on and tell <laughs> us what you want to tell us without yes. looking into the future as such. Yes, like, yes, I do have work that is not depressing. I have uh, stories. It's just that uh, there are things you, you pick naturally uh, just to have uh, too much in the time, so the things that are around. So maybe, I don't know. Um, could we read a story, the next piece, or that's after Hilda? Okay, we are going yeah. to read the next story, mm. hoping that it won't be a depressing one, uh, as yeah. by Grace's, I uh, mean by, yeah, Grace's standard. But before mm. we read the next piece, let's mm. hear from Madame Hilda, what two uh, points she's picked out from the charts. Hilda? Please unmute yourself, Hilda. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, uh, Bridget? It's Bridget Nakui. I'm speaking on behalf of Hilda. Please. As a member of Fame Right. From the chat, uh, we shall begin with Lilian Aujo after Mr. Matthias read his first poem, The Vend, I think, from Poems in Motion. She mentioned that it reminds the 
the subject matter in the poems of Mr. Matthias Mulumba reminds her of Labani Rapu's poem, The Guilt of Giving. And I also kind of felt it, you know? And besides that, we see Nanyan, Nanyanga Resti and Tracy Linda commending the, the author on the simplicity of language he's using. You know, like Mr. Sam, the poem you just read, 1986, it's trying to, to, to show some, some of the most powerful disconnection between then where he asks, where is the coffee? Where are the trading corporations? And now where people that are given funds to give to the people are instead stealing them. So there's a way he uses language and it's quite, it's in, it's in simple terms, but the poetry flows. And two people are commending him for that, Tracy Linda and Nanyanga Resti. Um, Joy Wolayo also commends the author on his regard for human re realities in his poetry. You say, Mr. Sam, you say most of the, Mr. Mlumba's poetry is depressing. Mm -hmm. I've also noticed that one of the poems that caught my eye when I was reading Poetry in Motion was Nina's story. I don't know what Mr. Matthias has against women, <laughs> but I like the way he displays his emotions. For example, Nina's story, in case he has time, he can read it for us and he can tell us what, you know, you keep asking him if he's single or not. I also want to know part of the people who are interested in knowing that because he seems to see what is wrong with women yet still be on their side. And I think that's why we are seeing, we are able to see as the audience, his regard for human realities that women are not the simplest on earth, but they're also the gold of earth. So I commend the, the writer too on those points. Um, oh, also Resti Nanyanga asked the question that do we think Mr. Matthias Mulumba is addressing issues of contemporary life, contemporary life? Let's say, given the poem 1986, he's talking about 1986 in because Poetry in Motion, the second edition, came out in 2020. But when you read through it, you don't see any mention of COVID or the hunger for food, maybe the vendor, but still he doesn't portray it as if as if he's missing missing the contemporary issues of right now and over concentrating on himself as a writer. So that's the question that Resty has. Is he missing out on issues of contemporary life through his poetry? I think those are some of the major points we have from the chats. Mr. Thank Sam, you. I hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Um, Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Bridget, I know I am probably double your age, but call me Iga instead of Mr. Sam, please. Um, okay. I, Ivan, um, there you are. Can you respond to those? And then we shall go on and read the next piece you want to read. Uh, 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 may, I just, may I just interrupt you to say, I think I saw Gawaya Tegule joining us. Gawaya, um, are you there? You can say hello. Yes, you are there. Thank you for being here. You don't know me. I know you. And uh, in those days, way back then, uh, you used to be more around uh, in the newspapers. I think you're now doing more work as, as a lawyer, maybe. And uh, I don't see you that much, but you're most welcome. Thank you for joining us. I don't know why you are here. I don't know if you want to spy on us and uh, have um, uh, the Ivans of this world go like the car. Quenzas, my own inclination is to think that you are with us. Uh, you remember, either with us or against us. <laughs> You're welcome, Gawaya. Nice to see you here. Um, Ivan, very please. Pleasure to be involved. Yeah, very nice to have you. Uh, Ivan, is it you who invited Gawaya? Whether it's you or not, please go on and give us your next reading after responding to the issues that, um, shall I say, Miss Bridget has raised? I'll say Bridget. Also, Mr. Sam, before, before Mr. Mulumba, there's a hand from Cynthia. 
Maybe she has a press, pressing issue to Mr. Mulumba. Ah, Can, a press, yeah. A press. Do you see it? I I don't see it, but since you've seen it, uh, let's get Cynthia. That's Cynthia. Mwes, Mwes, uh, Cynthia, please go on and uh, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Thank you so much. Um, hello, um, I'm looking for great signal. Um, am I clear now? Please yes, turn your video. Okay, thank you so much. Um, oh, I just had a question. <laughs> okay, let me put it on. Thank you so much. Um, I just had a question from the author, depend from the poet, depending on the poet, the poem who was writing. Sorry about the noise from the background. I'm trying to get good space. Um, when he was writing, he was talking about contemporary issues. Um, though, like what the lady said, the it's it is as though he uh, we don't have COVID. Covid um, related issues, and yet we are in the in this era. Then also, the other question um, I had was particularly to the poets and to to the censorship that you you mentioned about a particular person who had been arrested. Um, how do you balance the muse with with what happens in the society, or with the regulations, for example? You have uh, your muse to write, but then there are some regulations you're supposed to follow. How do you balance that? that? Also, how do you balance the writing with the income that comes out of it? Um, can writers write pieces and live on those pieces? Why, sh why is it that the writings that we have in Uganda for particularly, it's not always like the main source of income and it's always like a side something, side something. And there are those people that also, the people that write for companies or for like publishing houses and you write to, 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 to get money or something, but you write basing on the news. So where, does, where do you balance the news? I hope I'm being got Thank you. well. Thank you, um, Basing on what he was reading and the discussions uh, that were going through about some of our colleagues that have gone, uh, been arrested, done something because of what we write, but that's our news. So that's censorship. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You can lower your hand. Um, Ivan, may we have you respond? And then after responding, go straight into your next piece. Thank you. Yes, um, I've had uh, uh, two people ask uh, why uh, in, the, in the pieces I've read, uh, maybe there were no issues of COVID and, 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 and the like. Uh, this book, this edition that came out uh, last year, the initial uh, Poetry in Motion by this edition. Poetry in Motion, uh, was initially published in 24 and it had poems I wrote between 2002 and 2009. In this edition, I added some poems still before 2020. And uh, usually when you are writing and you're going to publish, it uh, doesn't mean that the work you write uh, most recent, uh, your most recent piece of writing gets published immediately. Sometimes you can sit on work for say five years, 10 years. Yes, so most of the work in here is uh, more than eight years old. Then the same for the other one. And uh, someone asked uh, why, whether I have work that's not depressing. Sometimes you are inspired to write, inspired by events, uh, say, events are about our own, like life on the streets, the political environment. Now, if the environment in which you've written what you've written is depressing, I'm not saying all the work will be, will, will appear depressing, but some will capture what you, the, 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 the times, and it will be depressing to maybe some uh, when, 
uh, is not in that time. I can give an example. I told you nine. I wrote it in 2005. They uh, might look depressing, but they were captured. There are some that might capture happiness, but it's, 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 uh, I think we shouldn't say, oh no, all I just write happy stuff. But uh, the whole point is we should write and we should write uh, 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 relevant stuff. Someone in the chat has uh, mentioned Shakespeare. Well, I, my history as, as, a, as a Shakespeare, but I've read the literature I studied stopped at when I was in senior four. So the rest was a uh, personal initiative. So when I'm writing a lot, I don't follow, let's say yourself, let me be a writer who writes maybe about from us, about what. The, the, the works, you, you put up a piece of writing and when you are uh, creating the collection, you include those that pass uh, the seeding uh, process. It might be a, 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 a poem that is not sad, but when you are ranking the works, Maybe so because of that, it doesn't make it into the book. So not, not necessarily that, that those pieces are the receiving process. Uh, you say, no, this one out, and even the editors, we keep this out, we include that. So it's not that you just decide that, no, let me just put depressing stuff, no. You put work that passes, uh, uh, whatever test you put, you put it to. Uh, okay. uh, there is balance in the news and the life. Uh, of course, uh, there, are, there are cases uh, where, and I think this one, uh, the, 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 the one who asked was Cynthia, in part it was self-censorship. Uh, in part because she hinted on Kwenza's uh, scenario that yes, you might get inspired from to write from something, but then sometimes uh, you can write fiction that uh, you can write fiction that it becomes so hard uh, because you've done maybe a good job to, to separate it from what people see around. So that's why some people even attack uh, writers. Then uh, the second, the other question was, how do you balance the writing and income? Uh, the truth is, in most cases, some uh, most cases, we find that uh, the income from the writing sometimes it's, it's there, but sometimes it's not as much. But writing, just like any other profession or calling, uh, has its rules. Uh, Income has to do with the business and 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 and, and other uh, rules that, that 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 govern it. And also, you find that also writing as a skill, you get better in time. So, how do you balance writing and income? Most times, you find that uh, you can't live on the income alone. Although there was a time in my life, uh, especially when I had just left school, where I lived on the what? on the money from the books. So it depends as you, uh, you get other ways of life, but there are other ways of earning, but there are people who are earning money from the writing, doing it full time. They might not be writing poetry alone. Some of them could uh, be, do, be doing research, uh, writing, uh, writing for publications and so forth. So living off writing, you have to, to also open your mind to the opportunities. There are people who are ghost writers, uh, who are biographers, uh, depending. 
So you as a writer, what do you want to make money from? Because they won't pay the same way just as other aspects of life, uh, other ways of earning, not everything pays the same. So even writing, uh, there are, for example, there are people who are uh, getting awards and getting a lot of money from their work, but they also they do other things to, to survive. Then I think it's like why it has to do with a lot, uh, a lot in our society, uh, avenues of making money. Uh, one one thing uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't subscribe to the uh, belief that people have a, a poor reading culture, but I would say a bias. Uh, there is a, a bias to reading, uh, maybe Ugandan content. So sometimes you find also distribution networks locally, because you find that most people make money also in their communities where they have. And the community I'm referring to is this country. They have readers from there. So uh, in most cases, you find that uh, they are sometimes not established channels. And then there is also a tendency of, of doing a lot of this alone. Uh, in some of these uh, places, you have maybe associations of, that push, uh, push it, and then funding that come, that goes to the arts. So uh, a lot of that uh, is, is at times lacking. So, and, and then also when you're writing, sometimes it takes time to have a book out. For instance, uh, this Poetry in Motion revised edition, yes, it's a revised edition, but I worked on it for over a period of three years. Since I do something else, uh, like you go, you polish, you go back, you polish. Same thing with the uh, blank walls. Blank walls, these are sh sh stories I wrote, but from the time I, I decided to publish the, the stories to the time and sub an editor thinking that you've done your best. The editor brings back and shows you gaps in the work that you never had uh, access. So you go back. So in all that time, what will you be doing? Maybe you do other things that, that bring in money. That's why most people get other sources of income because uh, they, are, they are perfecting their, their, their work, uh, their publications, they are working. It's not that everything you write will be uh, given a go ahead by the editor you get, uh, no. Sometimes you write something and then you are told to, to go back. All right, yes. So maybe I can now uh, read from uh, the next piece. All right. I'm going to All read. Right, uh, I, wa I, wa I, want, I want to move you on to your next reading. Yeah. Yes. I want to move you on to your next reading. Thank you. OK. Uh, I'm going to read from uh, Blank Walls. Uh, Blank Walls is a short a collection of short stories that are told in both English and Uganda. I like each story first told in English, then a Uganda version. Um, I'm going to read from the first uh, stories called uh, the title is Chasing My Tail. As I walk out of Mpombo restaurant to go back to my hotel, I for some for some reason, for some reason your connectivity seems to be disturbed. So I would I would say uh, when you take a position, keep it and let's see because you're breaking and coming back on and breaking and coming back on. Okay. Uh, just That's my turn. I hope mm -hmm. it's clear now. As I walk out of Mpombo restaurant to go back to my hotel room. I see Ochaka standing on the opposite side of the street. He's as mean faced as he was the last time I saw him. His jaw is leaning to one side, still dislocated from the punch I gave him 15 years ago. The only thing missing is the blood drenched shirt. He's wearing 
a brown short sleeve shirt, gray trousers, and a pair of black shoes. He has a black polythene bag in his right hand and folded newspapers in his left hand. When I see his eyes narrow, I realize that he has recognized me. I feel hair rise on the back of my neck. I almost turn back into the restaurant, but that would be a trap. He could corner me with ease inside the restaurant. I expect him to attack me because of what I did to him, but he just stands there frowning. I hurry away before he snaps out of what he's holding him back. I keep glancing back, expecting him to be on my heels, but he does not move. He remains where he is, his gaze unwavering. As I enter the hotel, I see a boy whose face I have seen several times today. He's standing on the veranda of the building next to my hotel. I stop and glance in his direction. He looks away the moment our eyes meet. His discomfort makes me suspect that he's following me. Ochaka must have sent him. They must be planning to do something to me. I rush to my room, stuff my belongings into my bag, and hurry out. Are you leaving? The receptionist asks when I rush past her. I stop and turn around. Her gaze is on my partly zipped bag. You booked the room for a week? I know, I say, but I have an emergency. My wife was rushed to a hospital a while back. She's in a critical condition. I have to be by her side. I'm so sorry, she says. I pray that she recovers. I pray she recovers soon. She turns to the chubby man standing near the reception, holding a bulky briefcase. You are lucky. A free room is now available. The man smiles. I hurry out of the hotel and check whether the young man is still there. He is with his back to me. I take the opposite direction and walk into the first lodge I see. I'm sorry, the receptionist says. A family came in a while ago and took all the rooms. If only you had come earlier. I walk out and go to four other lodges. It is the same story. Night has fallen. It's harder to find a place to stay when darkness settles. Most lodges are not branded and neither are they well lit. You don't tell that a building is a lodge unless someone told you. I wish I had just locked myself in my room and waited for morning. Ochaka would have knocked until he gave up, but the fear of what he would do to me had overwhelmed me. It had clouded my judgment. A room is now taken. I cannot go back. Amid regret, I see a signpost for Imelda Hotel on the opposite side of the street. A bulb hangs above the door of the single-storied hotel. I don't see a soul near the hotel, but I'm not surprised. Few people in Rakai walk on the street after sunset. I cross the street and walk into the hotel. It's not as neat as the one I vacated. The furniture looks older. No one is standing at the reception to receive up several times before a girl comes through the door behind the reception, the reception table. Her hands are dripping with water and her short hair has traces of ash in it. She does not smile when she sees me. Yes, she says, wiping her hands on the apron over her dress. She seems eager to go back whatever she was doing. I need a room for the night, I say, and hope, she says, there is one available. Give me a minute, she says, and returns to the room she came from. She's there for a couple of minutes. We have one room that is unoccupied, she says, but it has some issues. I will take it, I say. I cannot risk spending a key from the nail on the wall above the reception table. We walk through a narrow corridor until we come to the door marked 15. The girl hands me the key and attempts a smile. Sleep well, she says, and walks away. She does not ask for money. Uh, 
Um, um, Ivan, I, 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 I sincerely pray that you're not the persona in that passage. <laughs> you know, well, to think indeed, it is, <laughs> it, is, it is hard to find lodging after darkness settles. One, I think darkness has not settled yet. Mm. And I sincerely pray that you are not the persona in that uh, piece, uh, whatever you did to Wakaka or whatever the persona did to Wakaka. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to, to react uh, to mm. what Ivan has just given to us. Uh, Madam Sina, you will have to regulate us as far as how much time we have is concerned. But Ivan, before other reaction, I want to assure you that there's a debate raging mm. as to whether we should write depressing stories, depressing poetry, or whether we should write happy-go-lucky, or whether we should find a balance, or what is it that causes virtually whatever you've presented not to fall in the category of, of melodrama or humor. So that's one piece. But I would like to see if there are any hands uh, to react to what uh, Ivan has written. For my own self, I indeed hear you. It's hard to find lodging after darkness settles. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, any reactions? I don't see the hands. Madam Bridget, will you take the, the, the reactions and point them out? Because for some reason, I don't see the hands here raised myself. And uh, if there are questions on the chat, uh, forum, please point out uh, what we should put to Ivan. But in the meantime, Ivan, um, uh, that is my own reaction, that I hope you're not the persona and that I agree with you entirely that it is hard to find lodging after darkness settles, not only in well, Rakai. If, uh, if, if, you had, if, if, if you are our to read on, then you'd uh, realize that the persona in the story is 50 years old. And, and, and I'm not 50, so I'm not the persona. Then about uh, writing uh, depressing stories, uh, I think we should write all stories, uh, not having a preference, because uh, all uh, pieces of art, whether it's music, whether uh, it's, it's, it's uh, written uh, literature, whether it's movies, uh, we are given a variety. There are love songs, uh, there are mourning uh, songs, and, and, and the like. Uh, someone might uh, say, okay, that's uh, depressing, or that's that, but that's life. Uh, life uh, isn't all about roses, there are thorns. There are people who write about thorns, there are people who write about roses, but they are writing about the same plant. So, uh, Yes, uh, even uh, someone talked of Shakespeare. In the poems, she talked, the love poems, right? In the plays, it was something else. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, suicide, murders. So there are different uh, kinds. So at, at, uh, I think what people need to understand is that write whatever comes to you. When you say you are writing, okay. going to write something uh, maybe entertaining, maybe something about love, you are censoring yourself. We don't know the limits uh, to which our creativity can go. So you write whatever it is that comes. If it's a sad poem, let it be a sad poem. If it's a, if it's a, a, a poem about love, it's a poem about uh, an event. It could be an inauguration, a graduation or something. Let it be. Uh, because if there are people who will say, I don't like birthday poems, yet they also have and celebrate birthdays. So mm -hmm. you write everything. A poem, uh, yes, someone has also mention fantasy everything you write whatever comes whatever comes to you you don't 
just say, okay, this is because they are different moods. There are times when you just want, uh, can give an example of music. There are days when you just want calm, slow music because you want to calm down. Then, then there are days when you just need hardcore hip hop or rock and roll. Maybe you, you need to think and you need something that uh, puts your adrenaline up or something. So, yes, I see hands, uh, two hands, Bridget and then Gawai. Okay, I, I, I see the hands, Ivan. I do see the hands. I see Bridget and uh, Gawaya, and I'm going to ask the two to come in. But before I ask them to come in, I would like Madame Sina to please uh, be ready to advise us. After Gawaya and Bridget have asked their questions or made their comments, I would like you to please advise me on how much more time we have. Uh, Bridget, normally it is ladies first. But allow me in this case to let Mr. Tegule go before you. I won't say, uh, okay, to go before you, and then I'll ask you to, to, to come in because you already uh, are participating. You've had, we've had your voice. We've seen your beautiful smile. I would like to hear from Mr. Tegule. He too has a beautiful smile. Uh, Mr. Tegule and then Bridget, then I would like to hear from Sina, then Ivan responds. Uh, Gawaya, please. Thank you, Mr. Iga. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Ivan. I think the, the, the piece reads really good. Um, I was hoping I would hear the end of the story. Uh, I was beginning to get a little tensed up, um, wondering whether uh, what was wrong with the room he was going into and uh, wondering whether there was a surprise waiting for him in the room. Uh, wondering whether sometimes fate drives us to what we're running from. Uh, all these are uh, uh, what is called permutations that always work in, in the course of um, a, a tale. Um, so I'll thank you for that. I think it, it, it reads really good. Um, I've seen someone make, make, making a comment on the sidelines here that next time it's maybe better for someone else to write the story, so, so to read the story rather than the writer himself or herself. I'm wondering whether there would be merit in that because I think sometimes um, the person, I think sometimes when the writer is reading, then you get, as a listener, I get to maybe get some insight into what he was thinking at the time he wrote the story, uh, what he had at the back of his head, mind um, when he was doing all this. But of course, I mean, that's a debate that we can always uh, wind up over coffee. But I also wanted to, to say that um, I think the political dispensation in a country or in a society at a particular time uh, often dictates the kind of stories that uh, emerge from that country. Uh, that the of stories, both in English. It may be, if, if I look back at South Africa in the days of apartheid, I think the discourse at that time was very much uh, liberational. And a lot of the music, a lot of the literature that came out was actually geared towards li liberation because of the political atmosphere. When apartheid went, um, I'm sorry to say, I might be wrong by the way, but I think people ran out of ideas. Uh, the singers, the music was not as good as it was before. The writers, I'm not sure whether there, were, there was anything really nice. So they began now grouping around and where, where, where now apartheid is gone, so what do we do? So I think the political atmosphere often dictates. Um, if you've been under, like, if, if, you have, if you have been a free society for a long time, then I think, I'm just entering a hypothesis, I think you might be more inclined to write happy tales more than the sad ones, but I would be open to correction. I'd be open to hear what research has been made on this kind of thing. Uh, does the political dispensation dictate uh, the atmosphere, no, the, the tone and the themes that emerge in the literature? Um, but having said that, I think this makes, uh, I think it, it's a gripping read for me. I was very, very interested in hearing what came after, and I hope that I can find that book. Uh, uh, actually, both of the books that are there, can we get copies? Where can we find them? Uh, having said that also, lastly, I think Mr. Kakwenza was supposed to give me a copy of his book, and then CMI picked him up. Uh, so I hope that he can also tell me where I can pick a copy of The Greedy Barbarian.
Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you very much, Ivan. Thank you, uh, Tegule. Thank you very much. I, I, I won't make comments now. Let me hear from Bridget first. Uh, after Bridget, I would like to hear from Sina as to how much time we have, and then I'll, I'll give it back to Ivan. Um, Bridget, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> I've remembered not to call you Mr. this time. <laughs> so when Mr. when Mr. Mlumba started to read and mentioned the Mpombo restaurant, it made me think of this book, The Alien Lady by Lori Lawrence O'Chain. At the, at the back of the book, the great Susan Kiguli talks about how the guy is using English language, but he's delivering African speech. It's also a quote she quotes from some guy that I don't remember, but we've been talking about how Mr. Mulumba Mathias, Ivan uses simple language. And I, I would beg to, 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 to see, to notice that in the, in, the, in the story that he read. The names he uses, they are very accessible and relatable. So I would like to commend him, his ability to keep the simplest in poetry, both in poetry and also in the short stories. And also, that deliverance of African speech using English language. I commend it and I appreciate. And given the previous speakers, the story is intriguing, but for me, it caught me with the, with the way, how, how does he manage to come up with the naming of objects in writing? You know, the restaurant, the name, and the name Mochaka, very interesting starting point of the short story. Thank you. Okay, um, um, Bridget, you can. Okay. Hello, Bonega. Can I interject? Is that okay? Bonega seems to be. I think he's. I think he's, this... I think he's. Let's wait, give him a minute. Gawaya, you want to say something? Yes, no, I was just saying, uh, following up on Bridget's comment, I think the other thing that struck me, uh, now Bridget now reminds me, is uh, when, uh, when Ivan talks about something he did to somebody years ago, um, I think that's, that's, a very important, uh, that's a very important point. And I think for any writer, it, is, it might be a, a theme that recurs in very many books that uh, the things we do today have might follow us uh, even in the future. So you meet somebody, then you remember what you did to them uh, many, many years ago, and uh, your fears come back and say, ha, huh, I think if this guy still remembers what I, what I did to him, then surely there might be consequences. I found that very, very, uh, very, very punchy. I think it's, it's a, a very good device that uh, uh, he, him, he threw in. He must be congratulated uh, this item. Thank you. Thank you, Gawaya. Uh, Ivan, um, we surely could go on and discuss this. Uh, we could even try to insist that you tell us how it all ends. But uh, I won't let you speak yet. I want to hear from Madame Sina how much time we still have. But in the meantime, I've noticed that uh, Reverend Father Cornelius Gulere is here. Not that I've not noticed other people. I know Lilian Akampuri Raujo is here. I see Rehema Anyu. Some of you I know personally. I don't know Barbara Summer uh, by that name, at least personally. But I want to welcome all of you. Um, thank you for being here. Madam Sina, I would like to hear from you. How much more time can we take as I let um, uh, Ivan respond to the reactions we've had so far? Uh, Madam Sina, are you there? Yes, I'm there. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Samuel. Great moderation. <laughs> um, I think we can go with like 10 more minutes. Um, 10? So, yeah. Like 
two more questions, two to three, and then having some, um, yeah, maybe some wrap up from you, Samuel, and also from Bridget. And um, then we can go ahead with the night, I guess. Okay. Um, sorry, my phone rang and it kind of disrupted me a bit. Do you hear me okay, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. All right. Okay, yeah, Ivan, we we've got about another nine minutes. Uh, take two to respond to what we've had so far, and then we can take another two or three daring um, responses, and then I'll give it back to you, then I uh, will wind it up. Ivan? Okay. Um, uh, I, I'll first uh, answer the question from Mr. Gawaya. Where can we find the books? Uh, the books are at Aristo and uh, all branches of Aristo in film rate, in film rate offices, and then book point uh, uh, Bugolovi. Uh, Bridget uh, talked about uh, simplicity of, of language uh, as a plus. Well, uh, I'm thankful that you noticed that because uh, earlier on in my writing, I started writing when I was uh, very young. And, and I had a habit of, of, of having the, the, a dictionary next to me almost all the time. And it took many people, uh, my colleagues in school and teachers to tell me that the language I was writing was so hard for them. So, uh, but to a point that right now, I'm commended for writing uh, simple language. It shows that I've, I've toned down and and uh, I've, 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 I've taken the advice uh, they give me. Then uh, uh, how do you, do I manage to come up with the names? Uh, the thing with fiction, actually some of these, uh, they are, if you read online, someone uh, says they, they make some what you write as believable as you can. And how does it become believable if you are writing about something in Kampala? Use the streets people know. If it's the names, then use the names on the streets. If it's in Rakai, there are some places where you might not find uh, restaurants with trendy names. So you use the names that are there. So uh, you have to come up with a piece of writing that is as believable as possible and applies to where you are. If it's Rakai, then it shouldn't sound like uh, uh, Kashi Avenue. Yes. Uh, uh, someone else asked the question in the chat, what has been my experience with uh, self-publishing in Uganda? Uh, there is hard work in self-publishing, but there is also liberty, uh, like in uh, what you want to, to come up with. But uh, when you learn earlier in life, uh, in, the, in, this, in the journey of, of publishing, that you can't do everything, even if you are self-publishing. You must hire editors. You must hire designers. Uh, you must uh, get distribution channels, getting books to bookshops. You can't sell all the books yourself. You can't get to everyone. So whether you are self-publishing or not, it's the same process. You will write a, 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 you will spend a year editing a book because every time you give it to the editor, they come up with things that uh, help you to make the manuscript better. So uh, self-publishing, uh, I, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bed of roses, but it's a necessary thing to do in our country because at some point all the bigger uh, publishing houses resorted to academic writing. Yes. Uh, those are the questions so far. Uh, you got, if, if you could... Uh, Can I interject at some point, Mr. Iga? Yes. Uh, uh, Gawaya. I, I want to see if nobody else, um, okay. Mr. Gawaya, I want to see if nobody else wants to say anything. Uh, if there is a lady who wants to say something, I'll give her the opportunity before you. And if there is a man who wants to say something, I'll give him the opportunity before you. If there is nobody, yes. I'll give it to Mr. Tegule. 
Anybody yes, else? Maybe if there is nobody, I could read for a minute or two. I, I think that I'll ask Mr. Tegule in that case to say what he wants to say. Then I'll give you actually two minutes, Ivan. And then I'll ask you two questions and then we shall wind up. Mr. Tegule? Yeah, um, I, I think a quick reaction to Ivan. First, I think self-publishing is a good thing. I think the time has come to break the monotony of uh, having just a few uh, monopolies around in the world of this and that, including publishing. I think people once in a while need a fresh, some, some kind of breath of fresh air. As long as the necessary controls are in place, you have the right editors, uh, they're telling you uh, things that you need to hear, rather what you want to hear, and that, um, like he said, you get really good designers. I think a self-publisher who is really diligent and focused can do a, as good a job as the established publishers in terms of bringing out the product on the market and making sure that it go, it, it's good quality and it rolls out there and sells. Um, secondly, the question of simplicity, I, I noticed, I think Bridget harped on it. Uh, I also noticed the simplicity and I was very impressed, but I'm asking a question. Uh, do we need, because I think at the end of the day, a writer needs to be themself, uh, themselves, themselves. Um, if I write a certain way, I don't think Shakespeare, for one, was a, a person who wrote with simplicity, even in the, in, at his time. I don't think he wrote with simplicity as such, although you, you, you could understand him. I don't think he was uh, a person who wrote very, very that simply. Um, is it okay to let a writer be themselves, to write like they want to write, without being put under too much pressure to be, hey, no, keep it simple? Uh, I think that needs to be debated and maybe evaluated. Um, and lastly, I think they should, I think I do agree that uh, street names, use the names that people know, but that also means that writers, as fiction writers must take the step. If you're writing about something that happened in Gulu, take time, go to Gulu, be there, get a few whatever. Don't write about Gulu from Kampala. You've not been to Gulu, but you're writing about Gulu. I think that's a big, big lazy. One needs to go out there, be on the ground, study the environment, so that you write something that a person from Gulu will know that, yes, this seems real to me. Thank you. OK. OK, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gawaya Tegule. I don't want to join the debate about simplicity or not. I think I very much like the idea of spontaneity, the muse uh, inspiration versus perspiration. I think that a lot of the time when you are true uh, in terms of what you observe, what you see, what you feel, it is likely that somebody is likely to feel you. Uh, so I, I won't join that debate of whether you should contrive to be a little more complex or be a little more simple, because I believe it will take us into the debate of who are your audience? Who are you targeting? Are you writing for this group of people or that group of people? And so I will leave it there and invite Mr. Mulumba to give us two minutes of reading, and then I'll make a comment and ask us to wind up. Ivan, not more than two minutes, please. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to read the section in the book. Yes, I'm going to read, uh, I think, three pages. The lingering. On any other day, they would be seated in the house catching up on lost time. Muonge, the eldest, would be teasing his siblings about how they would cry before taking a cold bath and how they would beg him to escort them to the latrine at night. He would tell them how he made them plead until they promised to give him something, usually a piece of bread, all assured him they would do some of his chores. He would remind them that they sold them honored their promises, which sent them into bouts of laughter. But today, three of the siblings, Muonge, Namatovu, and Wokenya, sat on the veranda in silence. They regretted why they had come to their father's home. They were embarrassed. None had expected the issue 
to escalate beyond the famine. They had hoped to solve the issue and go back to their homes without a trace. They had been wrong. The whole world knew now. Naiga, the last born, was inside the house still shaming them. She shouted again, this time in a man's voice, I am their grandfather. Tell them they shouldn't be afraid. I am here to calm their fears, not to harm them. Her voice was too loud. It was as though she was addressing the entire world. We have to do something, Mwonge said. How sure are we that Naiga is not pretending? That she's not tricking us into giving her money? Her boyfriend dumped her a few weeks ago. The humiliation must have triggered this. You've heard her speak, Namato, his sister said. Her voice is as hoarse as father's. There is no way anyone can fake that. When we left the bedroom, she was sweating as if she had a fever. And the way she trembled, God, I pray her bones didn't break. I pray they break, Mwonge said. Look at all those people staring at us as if we are the condemned, as if we are family always experiencing the worst. It's as if we came here to horrify the entire village. They stared at the crowd gathered at the boundary of their compound. The numbers kept swelling. You shouldn't be complaining, Namato said to Mwonge. If you had planted the cedar hedge years ago when father told you to, no one would be seeing a thing now. Maybe I can stop here. Ah, uh, Ivan, thank you very, very much. Mwonge and uh, all those other names all belong to the Angabi clan, again, of Buganda. And uh, for anybody who knows about it, let me just say that reading the Abyssinian Chronicles by Isegawa uh, a decade ago or two, I don't remember, at the time of the Abyssinian Chronicles, we probably had had a drought for some time in Uganda and the Abyssinian Chronicles hit the market. It was uh, in Europe that it was, you know, loaded fast before it came here. And my quarrel, my question to, um, to the author was, how could you get one person to marry another and they are of the same clan? And yet we know that in this particular part of the world, everybody knows that if you're of this name, you're of this clan and you don't marry from the same clan as you. And the author dismissed my question saying, well, if it causes a bit more controversy, then the better for the novel. But I commend you for the fact that you are not talking about Muonge and then talking about Nagawa as if they are of the same family directly. You get what I mean? Those who don't know, don't know. Those who know, know. And for those who don't know, I've done a bit of explanation. Thank you. I wish to take just one question or comment to Ivan's reading. Then I'll say two things and ask us to wind up. One comment or question. Anybody? Hello, are there any hands? Uh, Bridget, is there anything from the comments uh, that we should point out to Mr. Mulumba? Hilda, Hilda's hand is up. Hilda, your hand is up? Why don't I see it? Hilda, of course you have the floor. Go on, please. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes, Hilda. I, I, I just want to, to give Morumba a big thank you uh, and uh, remind people. I know he mentioned that his books are at Femright and Aristoc. Yes, I would like to remind members that all Ivan's books can be accessed at Femright. So that uh, Gaiwaya Tegule could complete the story that he wanted to read uh, to hear to the end. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Over. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ivan. You're definitely a very good writer. And um, my only, um, my only, uh, um, shall I say, um, plea? is write 
more and more. You know what you said about earning from this or earning from that? I am in business and I have found that even from uh, coffee or from real estate or from, you don't necessarily make it in the first three years. After 10 years, you start being noticed perhaps after 20 years, if you've consistently kept at it, hey, when was Tony Morrison recognized and given a prize or when was um, uh, Hilda Trongere given a prize? So we go at it and go at it and go at it. If you go the way you're going, I would say, yeah, you're bound to be there. And who knows, you can choose when you're my age, don't worry what my age is, to be earning only from your writing. But that said, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank you for this wonderful evening. And I just want to mention two things, Cynthia, unfortunately, two things which are not very uplifting, but recognitions that we should make. One, Alex Bangirana died last week. Alex Bangirana was one of the compilers and editors of the Uganda Poetry Anthology 2000. A number of us here present, a number of us in the writing fraternity know about the Uganda Poetry Anthology and have got a couple of pieces in there, each of us. And so I would like for you to remember Alex Bangirana. Uh, he died uh, last week. I also want to say that our very own author today, Ivan, lost his parent uh, two weeks ago, Ivan, and uh, we commiserate week. with you. Last week. Last week. We commiserate with you. We thank you for being here. Last week. I want to think that uh, one of these days we'll read in your writing a reflection of what you've gone through, and we want to encourage you. And we want to say to everybody that, um, we know the times are hard. Uh, let me be very honest with you here, and partly because we must break the stigma. Something has been surrounding COVID-19 and making it kind of stigmatized. I got my positive test on the 5th of May, and I really suffered it. I know that Hilda did suffer it and her family, but... Um, at the end of May, we had targeted to climb Mount Moroto. We went and did it in order to be able to test ourselves to see if our bodies are back to normal. What I'm saying is there are hard times, COVID is ravaging, but let's challenge COVID. Let's challenge ourselves to take our experiences and share them. And what better way to share them than in writing? And so even the death of a parent, the death of a colleague, shouldn't stop us from having uh, forums and sharings like this. And so I want to thank Femrite. I want to thank Gote. I want to thank every one of you who is here present. Uh, I, may I may not name you all by name, but I see Anita, Bridget, Gawaya, Susan, Annie, Sina, Hilda, Esther, Barbara, uh, Soma. Fortunate, thank you, Fortunate, for being here, El Tablas. Uh, El Tablas, you and I should get an appointment. Um, 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 Akampura, Akampura, nice to see you here. And uh, Cornelius, uh, Father Cornelius, thank you for being here. Esther, um, I've mentioned, um, uh, um, oh, Nyachua Patricia is here. Uh, Nyachua Patricia should have the other name as Iga. That's my wife. Thank you, Pat, for being here. I am very happy when you join our readings. Dorcas, uh, Flavia, and if I've not mentioned you by name, forgive me, but I just want to Did thank each and every one of you for being here. Especially, I want to thank you, Ivan, for being our author. And I want to hand it back to you to say your last word. Then I'll give back to Hilda and... Um, and uh, Sina to wind us up. Uh, Ivan, your last word. Uh, uh, what, what, what I would like to say is that, uh, especially to those uh, who have not uh, released work, uh, people will tell you that Ugandans don't read until you interact with them and you realize that they actually read. So, uh, platforms like this and others help us to 
get our works into the hands of different readers and the feedback you give us. The feedback doesn't have to be positive or what we like, helps us to become better and it keeps us going. And uh, also those of us who have not uh, released books yet, we can help to polish those of our books of others, our colleagues. Uh, lend uh, your talent to someone to make them better. And that's how we we'll grow more as, as writers. Yes. I have been part of uh, the Femright uh, family, the Readers and Writers Club since 2009. In the last uh, four years, I, four, I think like six years, I've not been a regular, regular at the club, but I, I am grateful many of these poems were published at the club between 2009 and 2011. And then the editors I've been working with since I started, I've met at Femrite. So uh, our colleagues help us to become better. And someone asked about self-publishing when you your colleagues edit your work, of course you pay them. It is the way someone asked earning from writing. When you pay someone to edit your work, they're earning a living. When you pay someone to design your work, so let's support one another. That's what I can say. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you very much. A hand clap to you, Ivan. It's nice sharing with you, hearing from you. and. Um, I just want to say, uh, Fadaus, I think it's uh, it's you that I hadn't mentioned by name. I see you say uh, you've loved uh, Femrite since your university time, and you've got something which you've published online. It is available for free. Uh, Lilian Awujo says, thanks, it's been awesome. Hilda, to everyone, uh, says, thank you, Patricia, for the support of the Writers Fraternity. I know what you mean, Hilda. And, and Patricia says, thank you, Hilda, for holding up the light. Indeed, thank you for holding up the light. Patricia says she's enjoyed everything. Thank you, Fadaus. Yeah, we should get your book and we should uh, host you, indeed, as soon as possible. There is the discussion going on about simplicity. Uh, Father Cornelius uh, saying something about... Uh, translating King Lear and several sonnets into Lusoga, I can confidently uh, attest that Shakespeare uses rich language. So the discussion goes on, and let it not be that we only meet uh, when uh, Gote uh, hosts us. Every Monday at 5.30, Femrite does meet, the Femrite Readers Writers Club, and the recent discussion is to do the painted a poetry poster project once again. Um, it has not come out for two, three years. We would like to do it uh, again. And if we can have a hundred authors with a hundred pieces all together, that would be great. So Ivan, thank you very much. I give it now back to uh, Hilda and then Hilda will ask uh, Sina to please close the discussion this evening. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you very much, Lady Author. Thank you very much. Good evening. Gilda? Over to you, Bridget. <laughs> Thank you. Let me first unmute myself. Oh, you've now muted yourself. Oh. oh. Now you're right. Bridget, please unmute. Is that okay now? That's okay now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for today's evening. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of Femright and on behalf of Hilda Tonjere to thank everyone who has showed up, who has taken a piece of their time in these difficult times to, to show up and share with our author, Mr. Mulumba Ivan Mathias. Uh, and great thanks goes to Gote Zentrum and Femrite for organizing this for, you know, when this was all going on, it made me think of the most recent publication from Femrite, which is No Time to Mourn. 
It's a book by Sudanese women, South Sudan. And specifically, I want to talk about his, his introduction. The writer, Taban Loli Young, that guy from Gulu and also Sudan, he writes from those different backgrounds. He says that we should attend more movie theaters, more book readings, more Zoom meetings, not to go away with the knowledge of the writers, but to learn from our fellow writers, to learn how to run the craft of writing. We don't learn by hiding ourselves away, but we learn even in these difficult times, just like Sam Iga said, that even when we are losing our fellow people, the only way to energize ourselves to fight is by talking about our experiences. It is by joining like this and giving an ear to authors and authors also giving us, the audience, something to take away from. So I'm very appreciative of today. And I would also give, uh, would like to give thanks to the director of Gotthelenstrom, Mrs. Barbara Soma. Thank you so much for your continuous support to Femrite and for your continuous support to culture and heritage in Uganda. Um, lastly, very much thanks to our moderator, Mr. Sam Igazid Nunula. I'm sorry for calling you, Mr. It's just that you do your work so well. So the attachment has to come with it. With that, I would like to say, let's stay strong in these difficult times. We shall come out alive and may the parent of our hosted author today rest in peace and may he stay strong in his endeavors. Thank you so much, good night. Okay, I would like to take the chance to really close this event now. And um, yeah, we had kind of a safe space to talk a lot about not only the readings of uh, Ivan, but also share our own views and um, Exactly, let's stay strong, let's stay safe, and let's continue to have online formats like this to still come together, though it's not possible right now in a, yeah, in a physical place. And I'd like to take the chance just to announce the Engalabi Short Film Festival, which is, is going to happen online next weekend from the 25th to the 27th. And there is an online form you can just register with. I've just put it in the, in the chat. So um, Engalabi Short Film Festival is happening in its fifth edition. And it's organized by Goethe Centrum Kampala together with our partners from Germany, but also from Uganda on the ground. And uh, we will have short films from Uganda, from Zimbabwe, Zambia, from Germany, from Sudan, and exactly also connecting to what Bridget said, um, let's continue having this exchange on um, art products yeah, from, from this region. And Angalabi is one of the places where this will happen. So thank you again. I wish everyone a good night and I'm looking forward to see you soon, either online, physical, maybe for Angalabi. Um, yeah, wishing you all the best. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much for a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. Bye. Goodbye.